Thank you very much, Professor Mamdouh Mahdi and the, uh, the all presenters from the medical, se from the medical session. Uh, now we're going to just watch a, a, a promo for the conference made by uh, the Faculty of Applied, uh, Applied Arts. And then we'll start another session for arts. Thank you very much. افتح الصوت بقى. هو الصوت شغال كده كده عامل اه. طيب بس آه طيب بس آه عشان الاسم محطوط على ده. اكتب لي ستوري. حلمي. اكتب لي ستوري. Uh, uh, now we're going to start our second session today. Uh, this session is related to art and the impact of art on uh, our life. Uh, now I'll uh, leave uh, I'll leave the floor to Professor Ola Hashim, the moderator of this session. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, with you, Prof. Ola Hashim, uh, Vice Dean for Postgraduate. Uh, uh, st uh, studied and research uh, faculty of applied arts for one university. Uh, now start uh, the second session uh, talks about uh, today about the COVID-19 uh, crisis and uh, its impact uh, on art and contemporary design. Uh, 
uh, at the beginning, I am pleased to welcome uh, Dr. Prof. Khaled Abdel uh, Minister of Higher Education and Scientific Research, uh, Prof. Maked Nig, the President of Halwan University, Prof. Mona Fouad, uh, the Vice President for Postgraduate Studies and Research, Association uh, Prof. Rwaida Sadiq, uh, Director of uh, Hub uh, for Cre Creativity and Scientific Research. I am also pleased uh, to have uh, with us uh, in this session uh, Prof. Anna uh, Messiesi from Italy, uh, Dr. Bassan Tayada from Emirates, uh, Dr. Mahmoud Al Farni from Egypt. I leave you now with uh, my colleague, uh, Professor Dina Aboud, uh, to lead the discussion during the uh, session. I wish uh, you a pleasant and useful time, inshallah. Good afternoon. Um, it's indeed a pleasure to welcome you all to our second session of the uh, conference, uh, COVID-19 Multidisciplinary Challenges and Practices. Uh, thank you all for attending and we really do appreciate your interest in this session. Discussing COVID-19 and its impact on contemporary art and design scene would help us all to comprehend the overwhelming challenges that we all face, no matter what or our backgrounds or professions. COVID-19 carries challenges to the human race, um, changing the way human orders work. We are honored to create this panel to share experiences and explore future practices in art and design. Our future is indeed shaping in front of us now. Uh, this session hopefully would help us all to achieve clarity and balance to our societies through art and design. Uh, esteemed professors, may I call upon Professor Anna Masireza to address our first topic, contemporary art in the time of COVID-19. To you, Dr. Anna. Uh, good evening and uh, thank you to um, uh, Professor Mahmoud Halkorini and Professor Ola Hashem for inviting me and greetings to the um, scientific um, uh, community who has done the uh, first part of the virtual uh, conference that I liked a lot for what, what I could follow, but it's, it was really um, easy to follow and very interesting. Um, I start with myself. I come from Italy and I give you a very short, uh, very short lines, my curriculum. I'm, um, as a professional, I am a designer and I've been work, working in marketing and communication since very many years. And I was especially focusing on new technologies and web developer. On my artistic curriculum, I am an artist in contemporary art since when I was very young and in watercolor since maybe 20 years. As a curator, I am founder and curator of many arts events. Uh, the most important, the one that all the world knows at the moment is Fabriano in Aquarello. And, um, um, after the Fabriano in Aquarello, I have uh, uh, founded, uh, I am curator of the International Watercolor Museum in Fabriano, that is the, uh, it is only a startup museum, but it's uh, the only one and uh, one of the kind in the world. Um, Today's topic is uh, contemporary art in the time of COVID and from the cover you have um, uh, done before, I would, uh, kind of reorganize um, uh, the aims and I would say that technologies have uh, supported us to do art during this very strange and sad uh, period of our life. What, um, what I want to do today is to witness um, uh, through our experience that has been finished just uh, two days ago. Um, I want to tell you about our um, um, event that was done online this year because of the COVID emergency. 
Um, Fabiani Nacarello is uh, start, was started in 2010 and it is a year conference um, with um, artists coming from 80 countries of the world and it is a year conference that usually is organized in Fabriano that is a, a city in, in, in middle Italy and uh, it, maybe you know it from the from the name that is the, the name of the paper brand that is uh, produced in our, in our uh, city also. And usually Fabriani in Aquarello is organized with um, a real meeting in our town in, uh, in spring, this period of the year. And it is organized in uh, uh, performances with exhibition, lecture, teaching, uh, art sharing, uh, and um, cooperation amo among all the audience, all the artists that can reach the, the city. Usually we are um, able to welcome about 2,500 people and this year we were about or, um, uh, uh, nearly ready with the organization that we had started in June 2019 with per asking permissions, um, invitation and organizing the day program and when uh, uh, the COVID started we have to uh, reorganize all our uh, project. Um, the pre-COVID communication, in a moment I will show you, uh, was um, organized by, um, uh, I, I, I show you just uh, the first communication. This was the say the date communication and uh, the city was welcoming uh, for the 11th time the international uh, convention. Um, when we, as I was telling you, when we um, knew the COVID was, go was going on and it was um, uh, about February 2020, we were, we were very close to have uh, done all the organization steps of the event and um, uh, we were disoriented for a moment, for a few days, and we started uh, to to think to uh, about what we should um, have do next and, and how we could have organize uh, our project. So we started, of course, with an analysis. Um, what was possible to do? What technology we uh, were available available during the COVID period and what we could have used, and what audience we wanted to reach uh, in, um, in this uh, different project. Um, the, the main point uh, about our decision wa um, uh, was that we wanted, and it was our task, was that we wanted to offer the audience the same possibility we would have offered uh, if the uh, virus um, um, was, was not, pandemic was not going on. And um, uh, even more strongly, we, want, we wanted to share our same vision. So the, the decision we had to take was, um, first decision we had to take was about which channel of communication we should have used. And um, we decided by uh, taking care of the numbers, what was the number of members we could have been reaching by the channel we were going to choose. And uh, we decided to focus on Facebook because our uh, member community in Facebook was more than uh, 10,000 people. And by YouTube, because YouTube technologies were very good and the, the YouTube uh, community was uh, about uh, 1,100, uh, um, uh, 11,000 uh, uh, 11, members. Step by step, we had to uh, uh, restart the organization and the replanning of the project. So the, um, we started by thinking how to replan the appointments and the performances, since the task, as I said before, was not to uh, lose the opportunity to give the people um, uh, uh, to, um, to share the same service we would do in Fabriano if they, had, in, uh, if they had the possibility to come in our town. So we first thing we have to redo was the communication. And the communication I want to show you by um, our, our, um, 
but uh, our video, the one we, uh, we, which we welcome all the people. And this is it. Just wait a moment, I show you. Latvia. Too long to be shown, but what we wanted to do was uh, to present the world any, any way that by the technologies all the world was there present to welcome the artist, no more in Fabriano, but online. And online um, was clear to all of us, that means that we could, we could have uh, reached an audience that was no more 2,000 500 people but maybe 10, 10 times more and um, by the uh, the communication poster that we have designed on the same style as the style we had presently decided for the uh, Fabriano event uh, we started also to communicate uh, by uh, the social and by the web uh, uh, we started to communicate the um, program of uh, lectures uh, demos demonstrations and per artistic performance and the um, um, leader panel discussion appointment and some greetings from the stakeholders from all over the world that were uh, supporting our uh, event. Poster communication um, was defining also the different appointment that uh, the people could have um, um, had during the very same week they, they would have come to Fabriano and that was all completely organized online in streaming um, and the streaming was then um, uh, going to be uh, storyside inside YouTube so the people from all over the world even in in different timing area zone of the world could could have followed either live together with the Italian um, uh, zone time or later on by uh, as long as they, they could prefer their possibilities and the, um, I, I show you the um, uh, the program we were going through and it was organized um, as I told you, in uh, different kind of performances, uh, specially uh, divided for uh, the, the best availability uh, through the socials and to the YouTube. So we had um, uh, divided into uh, the, the, the performances into Italian master demonstration and uh, uh, international and under 30 years old master demonstration. Um, a special witness for the Fabriani in Aquarello that were very special artists, very famous all over the world and that, that had organized with us uh, the event for many years. And um, uh, most of all, uh, by the um, stakeholders in, in art matter, in watercolor art matter in, uh, in the world uh, that were very, very important masters who uh, were uh, supporting us in that moment from all over the world and um, even with something that was very new and that was new and um, uh, we should have been thankful to the technologies and to the COVID um, um, uh, uh, pandemic be because we would have been able to do in Fabriano uh, due if the event was going on in the normal way and this was the uh, panel and this Discussion that we had recorded through the uh, leader of Fabriani in Aquarello community uh, from 80 countries of the world and special um, uh, topics uh, that um, we have been uh, focusing on, points that we have been focusing on since the last years, but even some of them very new. And those points were that important to be discussed and to be uh, proposed to the people as uh, to open their mind and to, to look further for their own knowledge. Um, 
the, uh, I, I want to show you some uh, um, of the leader panel later by, by the video if we have time. Uh, so I, I go on, maybe you can stop me if uh, um, you want me to be faster. And another very important appointment that we organized, especially for the um, uh, 2020 uh, online event, and that was or organized for uh, the special um, vision that Fabiano Acquarello had uh, long the time, was the, um, um, i show you in a moment, uh, was the international appointment that we called uh, collective paintings. The collective paintings was not virtual, but was actually a real painting moment, kind of a marathon that we asked the artists from all over the world to do in two uh, specific time. One was May 25 and the other one was May 35 by uh, joining um, uh, virtually uh, the people from all over the world who were painting at the same time and we invited the artists to um, show their participation by uh, a photo or a video uh, while they were painting and working on their artwork uh, to be downloaded in our um, um, Facebook group that is a very, very large fa fa uh, Facebook group open so that all the people from the world could see it, but that is participated by 10,000 members. And this um, collective painting was something that we usually do in Fabriano during the, the, the real meeting and it, it's a very emo emotional moment of the appointment where all the people, all the, the artists uh, that are attending the event are there all together to paint physically. Painting for an artist, I, I believe you understand, is uh, like uh, an international language, a red line that cross all the uh, different culture of the world and it's something something that uh, really uh, means participation, really means a connection uh, between uh, the people that uh, are participating. At the collection painting, this time again online, we had participation from um, uh, masters, uh, big masters stakeholder and uh, very, very famous all over the world, but even a lot of growing artists, a lot of new talents, a lot of school students. And this was very important because um, it, it was the uh, mirror of the vision that Fabiani Acquarello has been um, spreading all over the world for many years. Um, by the um, um, by the um, By the Facebook group, uh, we are still counting how, how many uh, members participated the, uh, um, the online painting, but we know that the, we had an audience and participation of about eight, 800 people, again from uh, about 70 countries of the world. And this is uh, really more than what we, we could ever have ever do by doing it physically in, in our own city. Um, in, uh, another step we wanted to organize for the uh, 2020 online uh, Congress meeting was a different way to give visibility to the artists by uh, the catalog. And so we decided that uh, a real catalog, uh, editorial catalog uh, printed as a, a traditional catalog was not going to be printed because even the catalog was uh, going to be uh, completely um, be, be virtual and the catalog we propose through the um, to the audience to uh, through the um, uh, year uh, virtual uh, event was done uh, with again with the technology that uh, we were able to use and this is it it's uh, a completely um, virtual catalog
that is uh, designed with the same style as the usual catalog. Uh, the catalog um, uh, collection is uh, 1,500 100 artists. Each artist has uh, his own photos and his own um, uh, uh, artwork uh, present in the catalog. What we really couldn't do uh, uh, and we missed in 2020 virtual event was the exhibition. The exhibition, uh, even if we try to focus on uh, technologies to, to show, we decided not to do because um, we felt that the artworks must be uh, shown in reality and the audience must have the motion, must feel the motion to stand in front of the artwork. So we decided the catalog was the means, the, shan the channel through which we could have communicated the um, uh, uh, art community who had been selecting, selected for the exhibition, but the real exhibition uh, we will be uh, doing next year in, in next appointment. And um, as well as all the other um, uh, appointment, the, uh, the catalog was uh, downloaded in a very, very large number and all our appointments were um, participated and uh, um, encouraged by the participant to go on um, uh, with a very large number of uh, vis uh, visualization on YouTube rather than uh, in, in the other social network. Um, uh, this is almost all the um, activity we did and so uh just to, um, uh, to go fast and to relate on uh, what we felt uh, in, um, after a, a one week, uh, one full week of the dance done by um, uh, the online technologies. And mind, um, I must say that the technologies we could use were not in their 100% uh, normal uh, usual performance because I, I think all over the world, I've seen, as from I have seen uh, the, um, the web lines were very crowded and often it was even difficult uh, to, um, uh, to, to be in touch and, and to perform uh, with uh, uh, very good technologies. But, um, but I must say the people understood it and the artists uh, didn't really mind about this. And um, so our message today is that uh, even in a, a moment of uh, lockdown, in a moment uh, so sad and um, uh, so um, uh, in, in such a sad uh, emotional situation, art has a responsibility. Art cannot stop and art has re the responsibility to show um, um, that there is a way uh, to go on. Uh, art uh, has uh, the responsibility to always find a way, uh, emotional and technological, uh, uh, to, to bring the expression of the artist and of humankind to go on. Uh, we can be creative and professional through whatever channel we, um, we can dispose of, and art can grow. Uh, uh, can help to grow mankind hope. This is what we mostly uh, had found with our experience. And um, uh, most of the artists all over the world are, are writing us about having given them the emo a big emotion and a way to escape the sadness of the, the, the days we have been going through uh, during the COVID confinations. Art is expression. Um, I thank you all the people who have been um, uh, helping us uh, to organize this um, uh, um, congress um, um, by our um, um, communication um, we have uh, done several uh, information to, to um, from very professional to very um, very new to very joyful as it is our usual style and uh, I want to show our uh, last um, uh, uh, 
goodbye from the Fabriano staff, from the uh, all over the world staff, uh, to thank all the audience that have been joining us and to thank also the leader community who had been working to organize the, um, the process. This is it. And this is also the very last one, the one where uh, with which we have been uh, um, thanking uh, our our audience. No, sorry, I can't, I don't have it. This is not the right one. Where is it? Sorry, today probably I don't have it in the sharing in... Um, in our playlist. Uh, so if you want to ask me any questions about any, anything we have done during the festival, I'm here to respond to you or otherwise we can go through some of the demonstration, the art demonstration, if you may like to see them. Tell me whatever you prefer. Um, I guess we'll start with the questions, Professor Anna, because we received uh, a number of questions that is, um, I, I think uh, it would be important for us to, to hear from you about. Uh, first question, please. Um, in your experience, you talked about the curation and the uh, organization of artistic events and so on. But from your experience, uh, uh, what kind of influence does COVID-19 has on artists' concepts and references? Did it influence the artists' work or still we are um, in the process of uh, shaping? Uh, this is a very interesting question because we went through uh, this same topic together with the um, leader art community of Fabriano in Aquarello uh, during one of the panels and we questioned about it and uh, still I think we don't have uh, the real uh, um, uh, plan of um, all the happening during um, this period. From my experience I think that uh, the artist had uh, have been um, witnessing, witnessing something that very important and it is not uh, so much about what um, uh, they have been do, doing during the period or, or what they could do by uh, the online uh, uh, social or by uh, their own studios or their own art. And I like to see it from a top point of view that is the um, um, uh, uh, the, the art uh, all over the world and what we saw is that everywhere not just in Europe rather than uh, Africa or uh, uh, United States or wh whatever else we saw that the uh, artists were using art as it is in humankind again to communicate and to express e express to um, the world that they were alive that art could have be been the means uh, to escape from sadness to escape from problems and to uh, use uh, the art action as a, a, a mantra or a prayer uh, to feel better and this is very much related to the personal uh, relation that each artist has with art, but it is also the behavior that we see all over the world, the same behavior that we see all over the world. This is what was very interesting. Uh, okay, thank you. And the uh, next question would be, uh, um, can you see that arts, uh, um, this crisis, COVID-19 crisis is defying isolation? or um, is it working with isolation? Is it defying it? And the technology used, is it enough to defy isolation? Or uh, in your experience, was it not enough? 
Um, no, I think that technologies uh, relation and um, what we didn't expect. I, 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 as I told you at the beginning, uh, my professional life is all organized uh, about uh, using the technologies. And uh, what uh, we didn't expect was that many of the artists all over the world, uh, even from the um, countries less developed, let, let's say, or, or, uh, let, let's say, it, uh, all, all the artists from all over the world have a, a very good um, uh, um, knowledge about the use of technologies. And the other aspect that we must analyze, and it is very even more important, is that even if during the COVID period, as we said before, uh, we had big limitations because the network was working well, but was not perfect. Often the lines were interrupted, were overcrowded. Uh, still the technologies work well, and the technologies were the way to connect the artists all over the world. And we, uh, um, we realized that we could over also go farther than what we uh, do usually. Because, for example, uh, through the Zoom and the Google Meeting or many, many other software that are able to connect us by uh, video like we are doing today, uh, we could talk and we could share in a way that we are not used to do so often. And it was easier to be connected and to feel uh, equal and to feel uh, artist and uh, colleague uh, uh, able to share um, our artistic language even more that, than we do usually. Now maybe, uh, sorry if I say it, but I think it's very important, uh, we should start questioning about uh, um, what is next with those technologies and also what is next with art through the technology. Like um, one of the questions that I was given most during the past days while, while uh, we were organizing and doing the festival, the online festival was, do you think that the uh, museum, the real museum in the world, you have beautiful museum in your country, we have very many in Europe, but all over the world that is expression of history of mankind. Do you think that those museum will be um, uh, again, visited as much as, as they were be, the, uh, during the pre-COVID and or uh, the, the people will uh, become lazy and they will be uh, prefer to visit the museum and the artwork through um, uh, the web uh, that it's easier it's cheaper it's less a problem and and uh, this this really is worrying me I, t I tell you this is really worrying me because the, the um, uh, I, I'm worried that the new generation and the technologies that so well um, uh, uh, are, are, are bringing us very close the artwork um, uh, may become a, a barrier and, and the barrier is uh, um, to learn to, to see uh, uh, an artwork only through a video. This is the, the reason why we decided our uh, 2020 collection of selected artwork were not going to be um, exhibited through uh, the network, but uh, we wanted to keep them uh, cozy and warm uh, somewhere else and wanted to show them next year in, in reality. Because uh, uh, this is my personal opinion, opinion at least. But, um, and I say it, not as an artist, not as a curator, but as an audience. Uh, that feeling that you have when you are in front of a real artwork is not the same feeling that you have when you uh, see an artwork through a, a, a video or to a, a television or a, you, you can have the best television, the best computer, the best technology available, but it's not the same. And I, I very firmly believe that art, artworks, any kind, must be um, uh, fluid, by, must be um, uh, seen uh, by a direct approach. 
and this is a very personal experience at something that grow you and change you in your life it happened to me millions time and if you enter this kind of uh, um, uh, ability this kind of um, uh, possibility uh, it becomes like a drugs you, you need to do it more and more thank you thank you professor anna for sharing your experience and expertise actually uh, I, I think this would be very fruitful and helpful for all of us artists and uh, pra practitioners in the field. Um, thank you very much again for attending this um, session and um, letting us hear your valuable uh, um, insights and future insights into um, uh, art and design. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now um, uh, we'll have the uh, next speaker. Um, who is, uh, let us invite doc, uh, Dr. Mahmoud al Qurini. Uh, he's a um, uh, very, yani very well known and established artist and associate professor at the Faculty of Applied Arts. Um, uh, he will share with us uh, his personal experience as a, a practicing artist living through the dilemma of COVID 19. Uh, Dr. Qurini will present a talk titled It Will Never Be Extinguished. Let us welcome him and um, enjoy his art and experience, please. Thank you, Dr. Mahmoud. Thank you, uh, Dr. Dina. Good afternoon, uh, Dr. Khaled Abdel Ghaffar, Honorable uh, Minister of Higher Education. Uh, Professor uh, Dr. Magid Negm, uh, President uh, of uh, Helwan University, uh, you all. As always, Helwan University takes uh, the uh, initiative uh, during current situation and crisis. The first university conference uh, of its uh, kind in Egypt. Uh, and as proof, I present to you my personal experience, an effort to show how art has a positive and a stronger role in leading societies in times of crisis. Through an exhibition of my work since the crisis began up till now, life must go on. Life around us is full of uh, positive. We can use it to overcome any crisis. The artwork is not merely a picture, painting, or artwork, but uh, can be more and more. It can be a cry for life against such a crisis. If uh, the demand of art on moral grounds related in our approximately to uh, the event then we choose either to do something or fail to act, like seeing others suffer. It will drive us to action or instead relieve our sensitivity, therapy promoting indifference. The isolation created by the coronavirus crisis, COVID-19, has managed to encourage many artists to be productive. Art is able to go to get people out of his isolation. That sense of uh, the art and it has a great role in cleansing our soul. Art of all kinds, visual, dynamic, uh, applied and uh, sensory, playing a great role in, t in times of crisis. They express the needs of the people, reflecting the, the general atmosphere and supporting the role they play in all stages of the crisis. Art of all kinds have played a role during the corona crisis, and many artistic posts have emerged around the world. Many even to non-artists who are uh, keen to create creativity in order to amuse themselves and, or, and, or others by providing some sort of relief. We can even say it was an invitation to overcome the corona crisis by discovering our consciousness. Thank you. You can start the, the movie, please.
حوالينا الحياة مليانة معجزات كوباية مية شعاع من الشمس ورقة وردة ضحك شوية مطر إذا كنا بنعيش في وعي أكيد من السهل إن إحنا نشوف المعجزات في كل حاجة كل إنسان هو شوية معجزات العينين اللي بنشوف بيها الوان والاشكال الودان اللي بنسمع بيها صوت النحل او صوت الرعد الدماغ اللي بيفكر في بقعه تراب بنفس سهوله التفكير في الكون كله قلبنا اللي بيدق بنفس ايقاع كل الكائنات النفس هو الجسر اللي بيربطنا بالحياه هو اللي بيوحد جسمنا بافكارنا لما بيكون علينا تايه لازم نستخدم انفسنا وسيله للسيطره على عقلنا مره ثانيه الفن هو العاطفه الهوس ما نعرفش ايش من غيره إذا ما بدأناش فيه هننتهي لإيه؟ ممكن نتلخبط أنا بقول إن إن إحنا نلاقي شيء ممكن نحبه بجنان ويحبنا بنفس الطريقة ازاي لقيته؟ انسى عقلك واسمع قلبك انا ما بسمعش اي قلب اي تخاطر اذا كنت صح هترجع لان الحقيقه هو مفيش معنى لحياتنا كلها من غير التجربه دي من غير التجارب دي احنا ما عشناش خالص لازم نحاول لانه اذا ما حاولناش فاحنا ما عشناش
الظروف الاستثنائيه اللي احنا عايشين فيها دي بتغيب الانا بتاعت الفنان بتندمج مع مجموعة الناس كلها بتشاركهم في تعبيرها عن الخوف والقلق ده اللي بيحصل في الظروف الاستثنائية النفس بتنسى هي ايه بتنسى نقدها بتنسى سخريتها من الناس وبعدين بتنسى تسأل هي مين احنا عايشين في الوقت الحالي وسط أرقام كتيرة عن الناس بتموت كل يوم الفن بس هو اللي هينقذها في اللحظات دي هو اللي بينور زي شعاع الشمس هو اللي بيكون الحجر اللي ما بيترمي في بركة مية راكدة بيديها الحياة الفن هو اللي بيرسل لنا لوحة بيعزف مقطوع لكنه فرقة موسيقية ما ترضاش أبدا إن يتحكم عليها بالنسيان أو الموت لازم يكون ليها الحق إن تحكي قصتها ذروة المشاعر في تناقضاتها القصوى محمود القريني Thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Mahmoud, um, for the interesting, um, deep insight into your soul and um, your expression as an artist. And I think this will make us all um, uh, um, reconsider not only um, enhancing our bodies, but also enhancing our souls through art. Um, this is to go through this uh, crisis of COVID-19. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Mahmoud, very much. Um, next, we'll uh, be joined by uh, Dr. Basant Ayeda. Um, she's a vice dean at uh, Ajman University, City Ajman University, um, um, and uh, she has a wide experience in it. Media uh, planning. Um, Dr. Basant will talk to us. Uh, to, to, will talk to us about um, social responsibility. Um, in for creative industries, especially for advertising. Uh, let us uh, please welcome Dr. Basant and I'll leave her to uh, to the talk. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dina. Uh, I would first like to thank everyone uh, for organizing this conference. It's, uh, it's actually a privilege for me to be part of it. It's a privilege to be uh, to take part in a conference uh, with the uh, college I have graduated from, I've been associated with uh, for my bachelor's, my master's, and my PhD. So thank you very much for that. Uh, I would also like to thank everyone who has communicated with me, uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Muna, uh, Fouad, Professor Ola Hashim, and of course, Dr. Dina for uh, the continuous follow-up that she has been doing. Um, so um, today I will be discussing um, how our situation these days, how COVID-19 has actually um, impacted and affected uh, advertising. Um, I don't know, should I share or are you sharing? He's sharing already, Dr. Basant. All right, fine. Uh, 
Um, so if we can move on to the first slide, please. So um, actually, uh, when we're discussing advertising, uh, there is always a reason why we advertise. That's what we always say. We don't advertise for the sake of uh, just to be there or just to show up on the media. Brands are always having a certain uh, reason to advertise. There's always an aim that, that we need to reach. Um, when we always discuss advertising, there is always um, our aim, no matter how the ad looks, our aim is always to reach um, a point of action with our consumers. So however we are advertising, if it's, a, if it's, a, if it's just an ad where we're um, expressing the uh, benefits of our product or if it's an awareness campaign where we need to mention things about everything that's going on around us or uh, whatever form it is taking even if it's a sponsorship form um, then at the end of the day we need to reach an action with our consumers so what we're always trying to say is that we have to move with our consumers from the cognitive stage, as we know, until we reach the behavior stage. And that would go through uh, reaching out to the people's emotions. That's what we always say. So uh, we always search for a positive recognition uh, with our brands, with our ads. We need to create a brand identity, like we always mention. There has to be credibility. Uh, we have to create some sort of loyalty between our consumers, our prospects, and our um, product. So this loyalty, when we start thinking about it, um, based on our psychological studies, uh, when we're going through the psycho psychographic studies with our consumers, um, consumers are always um, heading towards brands that feel who they feel that they're close to them. They feel that these brands are close to their lifestyle. They feel that these brands understand their needs. Um, so the thing is what we try to do in advertising all the time is to reach out to the consumers, not only with the product, but to reach out to the consumers by stating and by showing that we as a product are very close to you. We are part of you, we're part of your life. We understand how you feel. And we, we are always there for you, uh, uh, fulfilling all your needs. And at the end of the day, like I always say, we're always doing that because we need some sort of action um, that would come from our consumers. So um, if, um, can we, next please. So when we're discussing um, what, what do we need to do with advertising? How do we need to influence uh, our consumers uh, to reach out to my, how can I influence them to reach out to my product? How can I, how can I make my product part of their everyday life? So um, like we always say uh, that human beings, as we say, are always emotional. They're always emotional and social creatures. And they always seek out to to belonging. We always try to belong to something. Belonging comes through the products that we use. Belonging comes through what our friends' products they're using, what the family are using. Sometimes belonging comes from the brands or the products that we are used to seeing uh, throughout our lives since we were kids until we grow up. That's through our parents, through our friends, through our social network. So and we've seen advertising ever since we're, we're on this place, we're on this planet, we've seen advertising going on. But advertising changes with whatever we are going through. Now we've seen so many crises happening. I mean, we've been through, uh, if we go back to history, uh, the planet has been through several crises, health crises, maybe social crises, wars, and so on. So, when we start advertising, there has to be, like we say, there has to be an added ingredient by which we influence the people and, and attract them towards our product. Um, to influence them, like I always say, 
try to reach out to what these people are feeling. Now, there are so many products out there. And ever since, I mean, um, here, I mean, we've, we've been at home since uh, March. And since March, um, we are starting to see, uh, we're, I mean, we're, we're more in front of the TV, we're more in front of social media, um, we're more into uh, online shopping, of course, as we know. So how can I reach out with my ads to these people who are going through psychological issues as well? I mean, some people are going through anxiety, some people are going through, they're, they're, they're getting panic attacks, some people are, um, are so unhappy with this stay home thing. But um, what we need to do is that we need to shift our strategies, um, which we follow through advertising, uh, in order to reach out to these people. So we have to connect with their belief systems. If I think um, people are, are going through some panic attacks, then how can I reach out with my product to these ones? How can I advertise their fears and make my product be part of their, um, how, how can my product calm them down? How can my product be uh, part of solving their anxiety attacks that they're going through? Um, next, please. Thank you. So um, when we are discussing social responsibility and advertising, uh, it's not a new ta it's not a new thing we're discussing. I mean, CSR has been going on ever since advertising existed almost, and a lot of companies, a lot of brands have been um, advertising through the idea of social responsibility. Uh, even before this COVID-19 thing we're going through, um, there have been so many um, campaigns done by specific brands discussing and addressing um, some, uh, pol some, let's say, political issues, social issues, and so on. Uh, one of the ads I've actually been uh, exposed to the past few days uh, is an ad for Nike, um, which they have produced uh, to discuss or to, um, let's say, be part of this thing going on in the US now. Uh, because of the, the death of Floyd. So Nike has produced an ad uh, stating that them as a brand stand hand in hand with the people against racism and so on. Now Nike has not been, hasn't done this right now. Nike has been going on through uh, social responsibility ads ever since uh, maybe let's say two, three years back. They've been, go, they've been doing it and they've been doing it strongly. Uh, they've been discussing racism several times. They have discussed uh, inequality several times. They have discussed uh, how women can take leading jobs and be placed in leading positions and so on. So the social responsibility advertising, it exists, it's there, and it has several reasons. That's why they're doing it. So part of the reasons is um, they're trying to build trust. What we try to do is we try to build trust between the product and the uh, target audience or the people in general. Um, we try, of course, by all means, we need to increase exposure. Uh, we need to have our products available in the minds, and that's what we call the uh, perception, the product positioning needs to be there. Uh, we need to, of course, associate the brand with a purpose. Um, the more the brand has a purpose, the more the people feel that this brand is uh, interested or is, um, is going hand in hand with the people um, throughout their fears, throughout their issues, they feel that that brand is more close to them. Of course, we need to keep uh, keep uh, keep keep up with the trends. Now we have several trends going on. Every now and then, things pop up, and that's how advertising needs to keep up with it. We need to improve engagement, of course, um, with our social media platforms that we have all around us. Engagement has been improved uh, with the brands because we are we're able to comment, we're able to share, we're able to ask questions. We're actually even able to share our fears and our concerns. 
uh, with these ads that we are seeing through social media. And of course, by all means, we are targeting millennials, which is very important because they do have an impact on the image and the, of course, uh, profit of each product being sold. Next, please. So we're, our question is always, um, and that's what we're always trying to search for, is, is our advertising about CSR? Is it about social, relation, uh, social responsibility? Or is it about leadership? Now, leadership is very important uh, to these products. Leadership is very important to be shown in advertising. Um, either it's either we're doing awareness campaigns because nowadays I can see so many campaigns being done um, as awareness campaigns for the COVID-19. I mean, how do you wash your hands? What, what social distancing means? How to stay home? What to do at home? How can we support you with that? So, so many ads have been coming out uh, as awareness campaigns. Uh, of course, let's, if I'm talking about uh, what we're having here in Dubai, they're all, of course, supported by the Minister, Ministry of Health. They're supported by the WHO and so on. So they're coming from um, uh, professional firms uh, talking about that. Uh, but yet again, we have seen a lot of brands uh, taking the lead. Uh, in showing the people how they actually are part of their lives uh, throughout this phase we are living. So what, we're what they're trying to do here is that they're trying to reach out with leadership. Now, um, I don't want to only feel that the ad I'm seeing is just telling me, uh, okay, we're all, had we're all going through this COVID thing and uh, we're there and buy our products at the end. No. We, what we need to see is that these products, through their ads, they're actually telling us we are leaders in this phase. We can help you out. We can lead you somewhere. We can uh, remove your fears. We can stand in, uh, next to you. We are there for you. Um, so this is what we're saying. This is the importance of leadership uh, being seen through advertising. Next, please. So this is what uh, I was uh, still yet talking about. So um, this leadership thing to expand ourselves from CSR, just CSR normally where we, uh, where we uh, shout out for donations, uh, where we're, uh, let's say we're supporting a certain um, uh, disease and we're trying to find donations for that. This is one thing. And, uh, and moving to leadership, uh, it's, it's usually led by an ideological, it's the change in the ideology of how uh, the ads are being done. And it's, it's a change in the ideology of the uh, strategies that we use to add next. So uh, based on several researches uh, that were done, um, Actually, uh, this, this form of leadership that goes through crisis not only affects uh, the consumers and the brands, but it also affects the company itself. Because people who work for these uh, brands, um, they, 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 once they start feeling that the brand or the company actually cares for the people, and actually cares for, what they, for their concerns, they are more... Um, they are more loyal to that place. So based on the, on the uh, researches that were previously done, it's mentioning that 71% of workplace professionals said that they're willing to even go through a pay cut for a company as long as it has a mission that they believe in and as long as it's sharing its values um, with the consumers and it can actually feel how these people uh, feel. So um, also 44% in that poll, in that research, have mentioned that uh, the brand's alignment with their personal values was very important to them. And that's what actually helps in the achieving the positive ROI uh, with our brands. Next, please. Thank you. So 
um, that's what I was talking about. Um, when, we're when we're advertising through this time, through this period of the coronavirus, um, we have seen a shift in the advertising strategies. Now, the thing is not only that I'm out there as a product or I'm actually going through the hassle of creating an ad, uh, just to tell you, please buy my product, you're sitting, please go online and, and order it online. No, I need to do something different. I need to address the people through my ads with totally different strategies. So uh, the first strategy which we need to follow is that we need to address customer concerns. Uh, in a few slides, I will be showing you uh, ads that have been going through and have been actually advertising through these three strategies and we'll be seeing how they have been accomplished. So um, you need to address your customer concerns. Uh, you need to see what they fear. You need to be there for them. Uh, you need to pivot towards a solution. Now, let's say um, one, of the, one of the companies or one of the brands is not able to sell you the product uh, like it used to, then we have to find a solution through our advertising to bring it to you. Uh, to have it still part of your life every day uh, like it used to be. And of course, by bringing people together as they stay safely apart. Now that was actually addressed in several ads. Um, it's how can we bring people together by, ke by, ke by keeping them uh, safely apart. We will be seeing that uh, now. Next, please. So uh, these are a few of the ads uh, which were actually um, uh, created throughout this time. Uh, now Ford uh, has created this ad where it's mentioning that if you are impacted by COVID-19 and you're leasing, uh, of the, you know, financial leasing with the bank for, to buy a car, then Ford credit, uh, we're here to help. So now what Ford is trying to do in this ad is that it's trying to find you a solution uh, using one of the uh, advertising strategies which we were discussing um, because some people have, let's say, they've lost their jobs, they got a pay cut, whatever they've been through. Uh, so Ford is tr actually trying to find you a solution to help you continue your payment or continue what you um, regularly do. Uh, Jeep has done an amazing ad mentioning that with a little patience, the views will get better. Uh, it's just asking people that you need to be patient, you need to, um, you need to stay calm because they've used the hashtag of stay off the road. And, and what they mean by that is that you need to, you should not go out. And they're just addressing the idea that um, patience, it's, with patience, everything will get better. Next, please. Thank you. Uh, Burger King has uh, has done uh, one, a few of the, actually, I believe there are a few of the good ads. Uh, they've changed their slogan because Burger King is known to be home of the Whopper. And uh, they've removed uh, of the Whopper, as you can see, and they've added the word stay home. Uh, so again, they are addressing um, uh, the, the consumer's fears and they are uh, asking them to stay home. Now, Burger King, okay, if, if you're staying home and you need to order, they've also created an ad, which is, uh, has, this ad has been released only a few days back. It's about social distancing, and they've created this new Whopper, where they're mentioning that the Whopper has uh, three times the amount of onions which any uh, sandwich would have. And it is um, asking, it's, it's telling you, actually, it's, it's, it's a funny way, but um, it did sell very well, that uh, the Whopper with triple onions, it keeps you away from people. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to sell you a new brand, a new, pro, uh, a new sandwich. And at the same time, they are addressing the idea of social distancing through their product. Next, please. Uh, also, again, uh, let's discuss Burger King again. Now, that ad has been created in France. Uh, one of the really good uh, ads, one of the, uh, they've used a very good strategy in that one uh, because people are not able to go out. People are not able to um, go eat somewhere. And a lot of people were actually 
uh, afraid to order food online, order food to their houses. So what uh, Burger King has done to overcome this problem is that he told them they've advertised the idea that they would be selling you the ingredients of their burger in uh, um, the way you've seen here. So they have the bread and the onions and they will be sending you uh, the ingredients separately and then you can do it at home uh, to help you out feel more comfortable and clean with what you are eating. So yet again, it has followed the strategy of finding a solution uh, in advertising, so not to lose, uh, again, uh, their profit. Um, a lot of brands also have changed their logos um, as a form of advertising, social distancing, and helping out people to, um, to stay home and go through this uh, phase uh, in a good way. So uh, Chiquita Bananas is one of them. They've removed, there was a girl, uh, it should have been there, Miss Chiquita, and they have removed it from the logo. They only kept the uh, name of it, uh, and it has been mentioned on their um, on their um, uh, social media that Miss Chiquita is missing from our logo because she is social distancing at home, and we hope you are doing so. So uh, that's another thing. That's another strategy. Uh, helping out the people, uh, helping, uh, showing people how much brands are very close to them, understanding their needs and fears. Next, please. Uh, IKEA, one of the brands that have been working hardly on that, stay home. They have, a, they have produced a lot of ads uh, asking people to stay home. Uh, asking people to uh, order and refresh their home, maybe um, change the way they're living, maybe change a sofa or something. Um, but they're asking people a lot to stay home. Uh, Tom's also, Tom's is well known actually since it started. Uh, Tom's, uh, the way it was selling from the very beginning was based on CSR because uh, it was known to be that uh, what, um, what, uh, whenever you buy a shoe from them, a donation goes to uh, the uh, homeless uh, people. So that's how it started selling. So, and it continues to sell. So again, an ad's done on their social media, um, telling you that you're working from home. Now they have produced uh, these cozy slippers with a percentage off. Uh, to 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 uh, wear them at home and feel comfortable and cozy at home. Next, uh, these are uh, one. Of, these are the top brands actually that have been working uh, on their logos uh, to uh, address the idea of social distancing. So Coca Cola, they have worked on their logo. They have separated the font, the the, the C O C A, and so on. Uh, and they've mentioned that staying apart is the best way to stay united. Uh, that was in uh, New York City in Times Square. So uh, it's, uh, it's, a social, it's an absolute social responsibility ad going through their logo. Next, please. Uh, Pizza Hut has also tweaked its uh, logo to become Pizza Home to promote social distancing and staying at home. Um, so that's how it came out to be. Next. Again, a few uh, of the uh, very important uh, brands. Uh, they have altered their logos as well and their slogans. So McDonald's, they have separated the M, the two arches of the M, just to also uh, communicate the idea of social distancing. Uh, Audi, keep your distance, same thing. Uh, and uh, Volkswagen, they have separated the V from the W. And um, uh, Nike has also done, uh, it's, it's mentioning that if you ever dreamed of playing for millions around the world, now it's your chance to play at home. That's what they're trying uh, to mention. Next, please. Again, showing you a few of the international logos. Uh, things we all know, of course, Starbucks exists everywhere now. They've put a mask on her face. Uh, the Olympics, they have separated the circles, the continents, and uh, NBA, they have changed their logo uh, for a person staying at home, working from home. Next, please. Um, 
I've, I've also had a few, uh, I don't know, I'm, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you are watching a lot of TV these days. And uh, we have seen also our logos of our um, uh, Egyptian uh, channels. I've seen CBC, they have changed their logo. Uh, they've separated the words, uh, the number, uh, the, sorry, the letters. I have seen um, Extra, they've also changed their logo. And also a lot of logos like NBC and so on, they have added the home uh, shape on top of their logo just to give you the impression and to encourage the idea of staying home. Uh, so what do we do? What do we recommend? Uh, of course, uh, like I always say, never stop advertising. Never stop advertising. It's, it's, it's very important. If we stop advertising, the brand will not be there in the minds of people. Uh, people will forget it and they will start heading towards uh, ads that would, uh, that they feel that they're more uh, close to them throughout what they're going through. Uh, so we should always keep advertising. We should always not stop addressing the concerns uh, of our uh, customers, of our consumers, or even our prospect audience. Uh, and we need to always show them that um, the, the ads, uh, they come out showing you that we're there for you, we're there to help you, we're there to be next to you, we were trying to reduce your anxiety, and so on. So uh, what we always say that if you're wondering if you should be advertising right now, the answer is yes, you should always be. Next, please. Uh, just a few comments or just a few quotes I have liked to share with you uh, from the top uh, uh, influencers, let me say. Uh, so Bill Ford, uh, he has mentioned that creating a strong business and building a better world are not conflicting goals. Uh, they are both essential ingredients for long-term success. Um, uh, the CEO of Unilever has also mentioned that corporate social responsibility is a hard-edged business decision, not because it's a nice thing to do or because people are forcing us to do it because it's good for our business. Of course, Steve Jobs, uh, you see, he mentions that you've got to start with uh, the customer experience and work back towards the technology, not the other way around. And of course, Richard Branson, mentioning doing good is good for business. So uh, I just like to mention uh, or to share with you these four uh, comments which actually drive uh, advertising uh, and the strategies of advertising through crisis and through CSR and leadership. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for listening and thank you for your attention. Um, I, I don't know, if Dr. Dina, if there are any questions? Um, no, thank you, Dr. Bassant. We'll now move to the uh, students' um, um, videos. Uh, thank you, Dr. Bassant, for the interesting uh, uh, talk and lecture. Uh, thank you. About the impact of COVID-19 on advertising as a creative industry. Uh, as shown, advertising drives social responsibility as well as social awareness. And um, at the Faculty of Applied Arts, Helwani University, uh, students of advertising department um, had an initiative led by their professor, Dr. Samar uh, Haney, um, and the, the, they produced um, uh, some examples of awareness uh, ad, um, advertising uh, campaigns um, uh, to um, help people to cope through the time of COVID-19 now. Um, uh, awareness campaigns about COVID-19 um, helps to ease relief and support people um, and to share uh, social responsibility. Um, they have the initiative, uh, self-initiative al Haya to do uh, such uh, uh, ads. Um, can we share the ads, please?
Egypt is full of dreams, mysteries and wonders, but nothing is sweeter than a cloud floating in its blue sky. And how sweet to be a drop of water in the sacred blue Nile. Or a breath of air blown on a blue flower. A blue butterfly that assures the beauty of creation. Blue is protective and divine as in mosques. Blue is holiness as in Virgin Mary's gown. Blue is trust and royalty. Blue is concern. Blue can be pain. But most of all, blue is healing, hope. Our heroes are blue. بين الحدود الجغرافية ولا بين الناس كبير صغير غني فقير مريض أو حتى سليم قلبي مش قاسي زي ما انتوا فاكرين أنا مش هطول هنا وهترجع لحياتكم بهجتها وألوانها بس بعد ما أكون وصلت الرسالة اللي أنا جاي أقولها لكم حبيت أجمع شمل عيلتكم بعد ما كان كل واحد ملهي في حياته وناسي إن سندوا الحقيقي هم الأهل كلامهم وضحكهم وسؤالهم على بعض بس جاي اقول لك ان كل واحد هيطلع من التجربه دي بحاجه في اللي هيتعلم حاجه جديده وفي اللي هيعمل حاجات قال من زمان انه نفسه يعملها بس مش لاقي فرصه اتشغل في دوامه الحياه اللي بتعنده ومش راضيه تقف الوقت ده هو الفرصه ما تضيعهوش أتمنى وجودي يكون غير فيكم للأحسن فيروس كورونا ماما أنا نازل بداية الانهيار لاستهتار تخيل كده رمضان مضل رمضان وانت بتفطر لوحدك وبتصلي التراويح في البيت والشوارع فاضية من الناس والطبق اللي طالع نازل بين البيوت مبقاش موجود لكن كل ده ممكن يعدي ويجي علينا رمضان ومع النور زي ما بيجي على طول وتنور معاه العتمة وتزول معاه المحنة خليك في البيت عشان رمضان يجي منور زي كل سنة صوت شوارعنا اللي ما بقاش موجود حس القرية اللي اتلغى محلاتنا اللي اتقفلت تأمان أمل ليك ولعيلتك وأمل لبكرة خليك في البيت الحظر أمان مش حرمان الشمس هتطلع هنرجع لزحمتنا لمساجدنا وكنائسنا هنرجع لحياتنا لعبنا هنرجع للمتنا عشان حياتنا مهمة خلينا في البيت
بنحب الايد اللي دايما بتهون علينا ايامنا ايد تفرح اللي حواليها دايما من غير مقابل ايد شايفها بتكبر قدامك وبتحل ايامك وايد تسندك very much um, I couldn't be uh, prouder uh, uh, dear students uh, and thanks should be um, extended for professor uh, Samar Haney for her uh, very يعني, thorough um, teaching and uh, uh, she teaches from her heart actually so thank you very much professor Samar Haney and the students uh, who have uh, let us share uh, her, their um, initiative and sharing with us uh, the uh, uh, their messages that they give for uh, uh, the society. They felt uh, they felt the responsibility and they acted upon it and uh, they um, produced what they do better um, creatively. Uh, they produce good designs, good messages, and uh, I think beneficial uh, production for the whole society. Um, uh, now we would uh, go for uh, Dr. Raula uh, for, uh, con to conclude this session uh, uh, and uh, listen for the recommendations and conclusion. Please, Dr. Raula. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Dina. Uh, I thank all uh, the speakers for the sessions, uh, Professor uh, Anna Mirsiati, Dr. Uh, Basanta Yada, Dr. Mahmoud al Farni, and the students of the Faculty of Applied Arts Department of Ad uh, Advertising, Supervisor Prof. Uh, Samar Hain. Now we uh, will announce the recommendations of the sessions under the, the title COVID-19 Impact on Contemporary Art and Design. Number one. Art and design have great role <coughs> in times <coughs> of the crisis. Uh, they express people's needs and they enhance the role of people facing COVID-19. As life, as we know, uh, it's changing. Uh, the new order is shaping now. Number two, there is a moral purpose that relates to uh, how, clo how close those who practice art and design uh, are the contemporary uh, uh, creations uh, of COVID-19. Art is able to get people out of uh, uh, isolation and reduces the, the sense of uh, empathy. Number three, there is a social responsibility from those who practice art and design to ease, uh, if not uh, negate, uh, the uh, tensions of people's daily Life uh, advertising updates uh, its strategies uh, to uh, engage people and provides awareness as well. Thank you for your uh, kind attention, and we leave you uh, for the next uh, session. Thank you very much. <laughs>